Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, in this lecture, we will discuss about the different algorithms for aligning protein sequences. So, what did we discuss in the last lecture? You have given types of alignment, right? To here two sequences. What are the information you can directly get from these two sequences? Immediately, what can we observe? Right? One of the easiest one is dot plot. Dot plot. So, dot plot compares two sequences, right? If the sequence is the same in amino acid is the same, then you put a dot. Then if you make a plot, you can observe with any matching sequences, right, exact matches or you can see deletions or insertions in any of the two sequences. Then we discussed about the aligning sequences with some scores, right. Visually you can see the plot and look at the regions where you can see the similar residues or same residues, right. Then you can give some scores. For example, if there is a matching amino acid or matching nucleotide, we give a score, a reward or if it is a mismatching, we give penalty. Then we also introduce gap. So, what is the meaning of gaps in alignment? Insertions or deletions, right. So, in this case, comparing the sequences which have mutations or substitutions, the insertion and deletions are rare. So, we give penalty when we introduce a gap. So, now we have three different aspects, one is a match, mismatch and a gap. So, we give you a reward for the match and we get a score for the mismatch and a penalty for the gaps. Then the gaps, we have two different types of gaps. What are the two different types of gaps? Gap of origination penalty plus gap penalty, how many times gap is introduced and how totally how many gaps, right. So, if you have different originations, so we have more penalties, right. So, we use this course to align two sequences. Then we try to construct a scoring matrices to align the sequences. So, different metrics for nucleic acids and cell proteins. For the case of nucleic acids, right, how many bases? 4, right. So, in this case, based on the substitution, right, to either reward or the penalty, either it is mild penalty or the severe penalty. For example, if we have purine to purine, or pyrimidine to pyrimidine or other way, right, purine to pyrimidine or pyrimidine to purine. So, we give the penalty accordingly, so that we can give preference to match the similar sequences, right. So, when you look into proteins, there are various ways to align the protein sequences to give weightage to the amino acids. This is the one of the physical chemical properties, right. For example, if the two residues are charged, for example, aspartic acid and uh, glutamic acid. So, in this case, they are similar, right. This is this we give the positive score compared with aspartic acid is replaced by valine or any other heterophobic residue. So, this is the pairing of the similar functional groups, right, either the aromatic groups or the nonpolar and charge groups and so on. Either you give the score or you give the penalty. And we also compare the heterophobicity or the charge as well as size. For example, if you alanine and the serine, so this is similar in size. So, if you compare the size, so they are similar, right. Accordingly, you can align the sequence, so you can give the, give the score. Then also we discussed about the genetic code, how to give score based on genetic code, number of mutations in the DNA, and then the codons, right, how many mutations in the codons. So, we have from which type of mutations in the codons, then we can give weightage based on the genetic codes. Among all these things, how we derive the matrix? Then finally, we take the actual substitution rate. For example, if you have a set of sequences, get the sequences with the high sequence homology. From these sequence similarities, we see what are the possible mutations. From that mutations, then we can derive the matrix. We can see the what are the changes actually happen, right? And based on that, we derive the matrix. So this matrix is called the point accepted mutation matrix. For example, if you have 100 amino acid residues and 90 are same. Right. So, how many variations? 10 percent. Right. In this case, 90 percent are similar. So, what are 10 variations? We get the information and then we see 
the substitutions right what are substitute probable substitutions. So, here first we take in alignment right with the may be at the high sequence identity say more than 80 percent. Now, what are the various factors one has to consider to derive a prime matrix? First we need to see for example, a how many alanines in the sequence right total number of residues in the sequence how far alanine is mutating to other residues what is the probability of mutating alanine to a specific residue for example, valine. So, here we show that for a relative mutability for each amino acid how many times say alanine is mutated to others and the second one we need to see the exact mutations for example, a i j how many times i is mutated to j for example, we say a c m number of time methionine is replaced with cysteine. Likewise, you can see the relative mutability of any amino acid. Then one has to consider the number of amino acids right and the total number of residues in the alignment. Then you take the log of these entries to get this pam matrix right. So, this is why we also call this pam matrix as log guts matrix. We can derive the pam matrix based on various sequence homologies. We can say 80 percent, we can say 90 percent or we can say a very less homologous. So, we do this we use PAM 1 matrix that is to compare the sequences which are closely related and we use PAM 1000 for comparing the sequences with the distance relationship that means they are very uh, not homologous to each other. So, usually in the literature we use PAM 250 for the sequence alignment for example, BLAST or FASTA use PAM 250 for the sequence alignment. So, I will show an example how to construct a PAM matrix. So, we see one sequence here A C G C T A F K I. In the first case, A is mutated to G. So, you can construct a tree. So, the first one we have this sequence A C G C T A F K I. Here, A is mutated to G, right? First one is A is mutated to G. So, here this A comes to G and the second one A I is mutated to L ok this I is mutated to L right. So, everything is here. So, here I instead of here F K L then from this sequence then we have next mutation alanine is mutated to glycine right. So, here this uh, this alanine right this alanine is mutated to glycine. So, it starts with G. So, the sequence here also G F K T. Then again A is mutated to leucine. So, here we have this A is mutated to leucine. Then go with the second one. Here we have two mutations right. One case C to S and the second one G to A. So, now we have the, we have the tree. So, you can make the alignments right. From these three and the number of substitutions, we will see the probability of residues to be mutated to another residue. For example, if you see A to G or G to A, as we discussed in last class, we take first sequence and second sequence, right. If A is mutated to G, for example, if you have this one, here the mutation is. G to A, if this is sequence 1, this is sequence 2, this is G to A. If the second one has sequence 1 and the first one has sequence 2, then the mutation is A to G, right. So, we to consider these substitutions are equal in both directions, whether A to G or G to A. Okay, fine, take the element G A. So, how many frequency of pairs G A? How many mutations involved G and A? 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. three. So, F G A equal to 3. What is relative mutability M A? How many times A is mutated? Four, four, four. four right? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is equal to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is a normalizing factor. This is the number of mutations in the entire times uh, multiplied by 2 times relative frequency of A residues multiplied by 100. So, this is the totally number of mutations in the entire tree. How many number of mutations? 6 mutations right the whole entire tree right multiplied by 2 then times relative frequency of A. What is relative frequency of A? Totally how many alanines? Totally 10. 
10 elements right so 10 a totally how many residues 63 63 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 into 7 equal to 63 so, we will get this number 190.4762. Then we get the normalized mutability see because this MA is 4. So, 4 divided by this number we will give you the normalized relative mutability. So, this is 0 0.021. So, this here. So, now we get the mutation probability Mij. This is given as Mj and Fij divided by sigma Fij. So, here Fij that is Mga this is equal to 0 0.021 multiplied by what is Fij? That is equal to 3, right? divided by sigma fij this equal to 4. So, we get this mga is equal to 0 0.0157. So, fij is the total number of substitutions involving alanine less is 4 right. So, this equal to 0 0.0157. Now, we get the rij right this is the value we get logarithm of this mij divided by fi this frequency of uh, g. mga is given as 0 0.0157 right. So, fg we get this is out of 63 10 glycines. Earlier we take the value of alanine, now we take the value of glycine. So, this is equal to 0 0.1587, right? Then RGA we substitute the values here log of Mij is equal to 0 0.0157 divided by 0 0.1587. So, we give the value of minus 1.005. So, you can repeat this for all the off diagonal elements. For example, if you want to get the value of RIL, what is the how to calculate RIL? How many times ITL mutations? One only one right and how many i involved in this a mutation one only one right. So, now we can calculate normalizing factor that is the same as here 6 into 2 multiplied by how many out of 63 how many i's 4 4 right. So, normalizing factor equal to 6 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 4 by 63 divided by 100. So, we get the value of 76.2. Now, we get this Normalized relative mutability. So, this is only one isolation mutation 1 by 76.2. So, this is equal to m i equal to 0 0.013. Then we get this m isolation to lesion m i l. We can get these numbers, right. So, we will get 0 0.013 multiplied by only 1 divided by only 1. So, this is equal to 0 0.013. So, we get the Rij. So, we take the logarithm of these values. Finally, you get this value as minus 0 0.685, right? You can work out in uh, your uh, uh, free time. This is for the off diagonal elements. For the diagonal elements, you will get the Mjj. Mjj is here, right? For example, Raa, right? So, alanine, alanine will get 1 minus Mj. Mj will get from this uh, formula and you can get these values. Then we get the values right mjj then we will get the value of rij right you can get that. So, when you derive this matrix right. So, I can take a large number of data right in the protein sequence database right. What is the protein sequence database? Uniprot. Uniprot right. You can get the data with any sequence identity. Finally, you derive the matrix this is a PAM 120 mutation matrix. So, we see this matrix can you tell something from this matrix? There are some letters on red right. So, all these are Diagonal. the same residues, same there are no mutations. No. These residues are the highest values because the mutations, the proteins usually they do not want to mutate at certain specific positions, right. So, the same residue they like to be in the same basic position for some functions or some st stability. The next question is for the different cases the numbers are different. For example, if you take alanine that is 3. If you take tryptophan the value is 12, if you take 16 it is 9. So, there are some amino acids which are rarely occurring amino acids. So, in this residues are very very important to maintain the same position for the structure as well as function. For example, cysteine, cysteine is important for the formation of disulfide bonds. So, if you mutate the cysteine, so it, it, it has adverse effects. So, this way the, the rate is very high compared with the other amino acids like alanine or valine. So, you show another matrix say uh, PAM 250 matrix. Here also you can see the 16 to 16 is 12 and the tryptophan you can see it is 17 and also the same amino acid has high values. Other than the same amino acids, if you look at the mutations, some mutations have positive values, some mutations have negative values. Can you see the positive values? For example, see here. 
they are in blue. So, we see they are similar type of substitutions right. For example, aspartic to aspartic acid or aspartic to glutamine. So, you can have the positive values or the hydrophobic residues right or some small residues. Likewise, if you see some cases you have very adverse effects of minus for example, this region. For example, if you substitute serine by leucine or alanine by phenylalanine. So, if you see some mutations are acceptable by nature, some mutations are not acceptable by nature. So, based on the real frequency of substitutions right we derive the PAM matrix. Likewise, there is another matrix basically blossom matrix. If you construct the PAM matrix, if you align the make the alignments sometimes you can see several gaps. In the case of blossom matrix, this is also another popular matrix, here they use only the places where they are highly conserved, where you can get the proper alignment. In this case, they avoid the regions where they have lot of gaps. So, here you can see it mainly the conserved regions, this can avoid some of the statistical problems where the substitution rate is very low for any particular pair of amino acids that induces some, some sort of bias. Like PAM matrices, so in the case of PAM matrix, lower number of PAM matrix is appropriate for comparing which type of sequences? Close related sequences. In the case of blossom, they do the other way around. The lower number of blossom matrices are appropriate for descent related sequences and generally we use blossom 62 for comparing sequences of about 62 percent sequence similarity. This is very commonly used in the alignment programs. Now, I show the blossom matrix and we compare this data with the PAM matrix. If you see here, what is the value of C to C? 9, right? Tryptophan? 11. 11. Likewise, if you have some mutations, for example, tryptophan to aspartic acid? Minus 4. Minus 4. Here, if you see here, tryptophan to aspartic acid? Minus 7. Minus 7, right? Here, there is adverse effect, here also adverse effect. So, we look into these two matrices. So, qualitatively you can see that both are similar. So, now we derive the matrices. So, what is the purpose of deriving the matrices? What is the usefulness of this matrix? Alignment. For alignment. For example, now we start the alignment, right? If you have two sequences, if you are not sure how to align, then we can use these matrices to compare the similar uh, amino acid residues and score the alignment. So, I show an example. So, one, of the, one example is BLAST. This is a program, this, this stands for basic local alignment search tool. So, they developed an algorithm and it is also available online. So, you can use the tool to get your alignment. How it works? Let me explain this. So, first if you have the query sequence and we have database, how to map? If they, they divide these sequences into small bits, small bits of length k. So, usually they use k equal to 2 or k equal to 3. Right for the case of proteins. Okay, so now you have the query sequence Q L N F S A G W. These we compare this with the database N L N Y T P W. So for example, if you take into word length of two, so how to divide this query sequence Q L L N and N F and F S and S A A G and G W. So we made into overlapping segments. Then go to database. Here also you made into overlapping segments N L, L N, N Y, Y T, T P and P W. Then why are we match? First we see this Y L, Q L and N L. So, if we take the Q L and N L what is the score? For if you take Q L and here N L. So, we compare these values what is Q and N? Q and N 0. Right, L and L, L to L this 4, four. right, 4. So, total will be 4. So, if you use L n L n, second one L n L n, what is score for L l? L l is 4, right, how about n n? 6, n, n 6, 6, that is equal to 10. So, now we can use these numbers. So, we use this matrix and we make any cutoff 
square h right uh, this is this can be adjustable. So, you can put, put an example square of more than greater or equal to 8 and see where we have the values which are more than this greater than 8. Here if it is L n and L n so you get 8 and n f and n y get square of 9 n f n y what is n n? n n 6 f y y f is 3 3 so 6 plus 3 equal to 9. So, wherever you get the values which are above this your threshold then you put a star and then continue this and try to connect this these dots. So, you can do this first start with this small segment and you give this give the dots which is connect or connected and if the score is less then it will fades away then you can extend it and you can get to the for the uh, full alignment. Mm -hmm.